Hi, John Patel. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good. This is a very tanned, relaxed, mellow John Patel. This is not the John Patel I saw last night <laughs> in the lobby of the hotel. But, so, to clue in readers, uh, Ari Emanuel, Super Agent Ari Emanuel, did a talk last well, night. A lot of respect All things for it. Deep. I've had it in my conferences I in the past. I was sitting in the bar with uh, Nick Bilton and Josh Felzer <laughs> and some other folks. And you came in and lost your mind. You couldn't even speak <laughs> for several minutes because you were so angry. You had to drink a glass mad. of wine, just making these like guttural utterances. It wasn't entirely because of Ari. It was, there were what other happened? issues available. In the beginning of his conversation with Walt and Kara, um, uh, Ari went on you know, a little bit of a diatribe about how Google and the ISPs like Verizon and AT&T aren't sort of are blocking him from doing what he'd like to do, which is in essence stopping people from uh, accessing uh, stolen or um, pirated intellectual property. And so I uh, was the first question, and, and given that I've had a little bit of experience asking people questions, you know, mm -hmm. it's very respectful. And I essentially just said, you know, Ari, if you were running Google, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What would you do differently? And he said, I'm not running. Google and you know I, I'm like no Ari you know that's not an answer mm -hmm. but let me rephrase the question what would you have Google do right and he said well I would have them block a list of sites I would have them you know and and I, we had something of a back and forth on that and it was not that big a deal and I said okay I just want to hear that um, that that's what you would want mm -hmm. done right um, and then you know that was it I sort of figured my time was up and I wasn't mm -hmm. going to ask any other questions like does he skip ads on his DVR which he does um, <laughs> And other, you know, uh, there were a lot of other people wanting to ask questions. Now, this poor next fellow then got up and essentially asked Ari the same question I asked, but mm -hmm. in a more combative tone. And, and Ari handed him his ass, uh, <laughs> you know, I I as only he can, right? Um, and essentially, he, he, he did the equivalent of playing the race card. He, he played the child pornography card, mm -hmm. right? He's like, Google, did you know that Google blocks child pornography sites? It knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. It knows how to block sites. Now, people are stealing my stuff from those sites. They know how to block child pornography. Why don't they block stealing? Isn't stealing bad too? Mm -hmm. Child pornography, is it bad? Mm -hmm. He asks the room, is it bad? <laughs> of course it's fucking bad. <laughs> it you reminds know? me of my conversation yeah. with Nick and, and Merkel yesterday. And so is stealing bad. <laughs> but there's a huge distinction between constitutionally protected speech and not constitutionally protected speech. And by the way, child pornography is on the other line, side of that line. Mm -hmm. It's not constitutionally protected speech. Mm -hmm. It isn't, mm -hmm. right? It's been defined by law as not constitutionally protected. However, if, an, uh, if I happen to be an NYU professor who wants to point to a link of saying, look, there's a reason the music m business model is broken. Look at all of these file sharing sites. Link. And Google finds that link. Is my site now supposed to be banned from the Google index? Mm -hmm. He also wants to subvert the DMCA safe harbor provision, which has created, I haven't done all the math, but billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of wealth in this country. Mm -hmm. YouTube, Google, you know, ISPs, the internet. Right. <laughs> in, in essence, he, you know, he's not thinking about the long-term consequences of a short-term business model protection racket. Mm -hmm. And um, I just disagree with that. However, I do believe we can get into a room, and we should get into a room, as an industry. Right. And I mean an industry. We are an industry now. <clears throat> it's not tech and entertainment. You think we so? We are an these, industry. These seem like pretty wildly different points of view. They are wildly different points of view, but we're in the same industry now. Mm -hmm. We're all in the media industry. Back to the original question. I believe that Ari actually, and the people he represents, do want to resolve this, do want to sit down, do want to figure out some intelligent approaches to this. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they have a point, which is they're not getting, you know, they're not getting the attention they deserve when it comes to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we've seen a response to that already. Mm -hmm. The amount of sites and domains that have been taken down by the United States government in mm -hmm. the last year, it's unprecedented mm -hmm. and ongoing. Um, it, it really is. They've been seized. Um, and, you know, they should take some comfort in that. They should also take some comfort in the amount of money that they're making, which is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And at the fact that the music business right now has never 
in the 30 years I've really paid attention to music, mm -hmm. never created more good acts than it has right now. Mm -hmm. So what's broken there? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is it just that people who are used to getting paid a certain way aren't getting paid that way anymore? Probably. Sorry. You know? <laughs> and I think the next Aaron Sorkin's probably going to be going direct to his audience, mm -hmm. you know? And then cutting distribution deals afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Ari said the funniest thing, that was another thing that kind of made me angry, he said, I've got this great idea. I have 1.5 million fans on Friday Night's li on mm -hmm. Facebook for Friday Night Lights. And, you know, that show almost died twice or something, you know, it's like right. a classic story of fans saying, I want the show back, and, right. you know, um, <clears throat> it's a great show, and so on. And uh, he said, I have this great idea. I might go direct to my fans and, and just say, will you fund it? You know, if, if each of them gave me $10, I'd have $15 million and I can make another Friday Night Lights movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ever heard of Kickstarter? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that model's been built by us. We'd love to help you, right? You know, it's like, we need to get in the same room here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. um, Ari, that's a great idea, but you know, there have been a ton of films already actually <laughs> that have been, in fact, financed on Kickstarter, right. you know, and, and if you were to put one of yours on there, wow, I think that might do a lot for, you know, and by the way, that's a direct model. Mm -hmm. That's the model that a lot of your friends are saying they don't want to happen because they need to all go through a channel, channel through a studio, or, you know, and yeah. so I think he gets it that things are changing. He wants some protection around that, and I get that, mm -hmm. and I think we can all get in a room. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think we may.